Hello everyone. Welcome to the lab nine of EC five seven three advanced embedded logic design. In the previous lab, we discussed about the matrix multiplication using the AXI stream interface. We discussed about how we can improve the performance of the matrix implement in multiplication using the HLS pipeline as well as HLS array partitioning pragmas. In this example, in this lab, we are going to discuss how we can further improve the performance of the matrix multiplication via word length optimization. Word length optimization is important when you are implementing any algorithm on the hardware such as FPGA and ASIC. In the processor based implementation, the word lengths are limited. You can have the word lengths which are multiple of eight because this is how the processors are designed. On the other hand, there is no restriction on the word length of the hardware. As per your requirement, you can have one bit, two bit, eight bit, nine bit, 17 bit, any word length you can select. The advantage of freedom to select any word length leads to you to get the desired accuracy, but at the lower resource utilization. Now we are going to discuss how we can select the appropriate word length in the Vivado HLS. So as discussed before, in the C, conventional C language, you have the fixed data type. For example, character, which is 8-bit, integer, which is short integer, which is 16-bit, normal integer, which is 32-bit, long, long int, which is 64-bit, and in floating point, you have 32-bit floating point, that is called as a single precision floating point, and 64-bit floating, floating point, that is the uh, double precision floating point. So these are eight bit boundaries which are supported in the C. So this leads to the inefficient hardware because you are not choosing the exact data type what you need for your hardware or the algorithm. So there is a need of supporting the arbitrary word length in the HLS, which is where we convert the C language to the C code to the very low code. Uh, one of the example is that, for example, if you are doing the uh, two uh, multiplication of, if you are doing the multiplication, of two 18-bit number. Now, uh, in this case, you can see that uh, a DSP unit, which is there in the FPJ, can accept the 16-bit input. Since you are using the 18-bit input, because of the just uh, because of the two additional input, you are going to use the four DSP48 to perform that multiplication instead of using only one DSP48, which you would have incurred in case you, your inputs would have been, uh, in case your input is restricted to the 16 bit. So that's why knowledge about the hardware platform is uh, important. And also the ability to choose the word length as per the hardware resources is also important. So since HLS is based upon the C language as an input, we need to have the additional support in the C language to support this arbitrary word length. Note that the code which you design using the arbitrary word length may not be compatible with the processor. It will work only on the hardware. So the standard C types are based upon the 8-bit boundaries. However, when targeting a hardware platform, it is often more efficient to use the data type of a specific word. Another example, consider the wireless communication where we use the FIR filtering for <clears throat> a lot of operation. Assuming that the input data is 10 bit and the output is 18 bit. These are the bit width required to meet the desired accuracy. Now, in case of the processor implementation, you need to choose the, either the input data 16 bit to get the desired accuracy, or you need to compromise on the accuracy and choose the input data of 8 bit. Similarly, for the output data, either you compromise on the accuracy to get the 16 bit uh, output, or you uh, use the more resources to get the 32 bit output. And this leads to the inefficient hardware. Okay, so using the standard C data type, the input data must be at least 16 bits and the output data must be at least 32 bit. This leads to the data path between the input and output that is wider than necessary, use more resources, longer delays, okay? because 32 by 32 multiplication takes more time than 18 cross 18 multiplication and requires more clock cycle to complete. Using the arbitrary precision data type, mm -hmm. 
So using the arbitrary precision data type, you can specify the exact bit sizes to be required in the C code prior to synthesis, simulate the code, verify the output uh, accuracy, and then convert into the Verilog code. So arbitrary precision is needed only for the input and output ports because rest of the internal variables are uh, automatically optimized by the HLS2. So you need to worry about the choosing the arbitrary precision for the input and output uh, word length uh, variables only. Okay, so similar to this arbitrary procedure, there are different libraries are added in the HLS on the top of the conventional C library, which includes the function and constructs that are optimized for the implementation on FPGA. For example, how to do the FFT efficiently on FPGA, how to do the uh, stream interface on the FPGA. So all these libraries are available. Using these libraries helps us to ensure high quality results that is final output that is a high performance design that optimize on the implementation on FPJ. Because these libraries are provided in C, C++, System C, you can incorporate this library inside your C code and uh, verify the functional correctness before your synthesis, okay? So using the HLS is nothing but understanding how you can make use of these libraries. So for example, in today's lab, we are going to use the arbitrary precision data type then you can use math library, video library, and so on. If you want to know more about this, please refer to the UG902 document from the Xilinx. Now let's get back to the arbitrary precision data type. Now in arbitrary precision data type, we can precisely mention how many bits are needed for every variable. Now your variable can take only the integer data or it can take the real data. So let's start with the integer data. So in the integer data, you need to include the corresponding .h file, which is the hash include ap underscore c in .h file or ap underscore in .h file, depending upon the where you are using the C or C++ uh, program. Then if you want to define the variable of n, n bit, you can define it as a data type int n. For example, I can define the seven bit number, which is a signed number by using the int seven and unsigned number using the uint seven. So these are the couple of examples which are given on the screen, which will help you to define any variable of the desired data type. So similar to the integer data type, you can have the fixed point data type where you have the integer part and the fractional part. And by using the AP underscore fixed dot H, you can uh, use this data type where you can mention the um, uh, different parameters. For example, here you can mention the W parameter, which indicates the number of total number of weights bits out of which how many bits are reserved for the integer and the remaining bits will be reserved for the fraction. Then you can mention the Q quantization mode, overflow mode and the number of saturation bits. So all the details are again given in the 902 documents. If you want to know more, you can uh, refer to that document. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to go back to our matrix multiplication code and we'll discuss how we can incorporate this arbitrary precision data type in our matrix multiplication code. Okay, so in the uh, my matrix multiplication, you can see that I have the dot h file. Depending upon the active solution, you can see that in case of solution four, I'm using the half precision data uh, floating point one and in solution five, I'm using the fixed precision uh, floating point. Now in the half precision, it is the 16 bit floating point representation. So I need to include the HLS half dot H. And then there are two data type I'm defining. I'm here, I'm assuming that my matrix receives the data in the double precision floating point or floating point number. And then internally, I convert them into the half precision floating point. Similarly at the output, I'll have the uh, output in the floating point representation. So I need to convert the half into the floating point before passing it to the next IP. This is the one assumption I have made, but you can also assume that the your input it, it itself is a half precision data point, data point. So you don't need to do the conversion at the input and output so you can save your execution time. But here we assume that my input and outputs are in the floating point number representation and only operations happens in the half precision. Same thing in the next solution, we have used the fixed uh, point one. So we use the AP fixed dot H. Here again, the inputs are assumed to be the floating point number and internally all the operations are done on the fixed point where I assume that there are 22 bits out of which 13 bits are for integer and nine bits for the fractional. You can play around with the number. And this is, these are the changes we need to do in the dot H file. 
then in my code uh, i don't uh, see a lot of changes in the code suppose this is the uh, half precision one where now my operations are in the half precision so i define my local matrix in the half precision then i take the input which is the floating point number uh, so you can see that i have read the input which is stored in the local stream which is again a floating point and before storing my local variable i data type conversion uh, i use the data type conversion to convert into the half precision same is for the b then i do the operation in the half precision and while storing the output back on the stream interface i convert into the floating point so this is how i use the uh, conversion at the input and output same code will be used for the uh, uh, fixed point again there is no change because we are changing this data type in our dot h file and the final is the test bench in the test bench uh, things remain the same i am using the benchmark function in the double precision floating point to get the maximum accuracy and then i am comparing the output of the my floating point represent output of the ip floating point half precision and the fixed point ip so again you can see that here i am generating the any uh, input with the value between 0 to 5 any real value and storing in the input these are all the floating point values then i am passing this floating point value to my benchmark function then i am converting those values in uh, on the stream interface and then i am passing this stream uh, uh, value to my appropriate hardware ip depending upon which solution is active after i receive the data i convert the received stream data into the local matrix and then i get the compare the output of the benchmark function with the hardware output in case there is error i print the one and return one so that ip will not be generated if there are no error ip will be generated okay so this is what the uh, how my test bench looks like in the hls so you can see that i have created the five ip for five different example how this is done for every example i do the c simulation if it is working fine i do the c synthesis after i do the c synthesis i do the uh, c rtl code simulation where i test my very log code with the c test bench if it is working fine then i export the ip and then ip is gets created next step is to open the vivado and import the ip in the vivado so now we will see the process in the vivado so in the vivado uh, first thing is that import the ip hls ip so you can go to the project setting in the project setting go to the ip repository in the ip repository add the your project hls project folder and those ips will be added so if you go to my ip catalog here and if i type the name of the ip uh, i should be able to see the corresponding ip in my ip catalog so if you see here you can see that all my five ips are there then each ip you need to add for connect with the each dma in the dma settings are same as the previous dma setting where you have the appropriate bus size and the input output stream size uh, i'm using the acp port with the cache current uh, acp ports to remove the need of cache uh, flush and cache invalidate in my c code so that i get the better speed up after we generate the bit stream export the bit stream and we go to the sdk where we compare the performance of all those four ips with the corresponding hls uh, the sdk code so in the sdk code uh, we do the same process of hls test bench where uh, we first make uh, first is that we make sure that all the dmas are initialized as per our previous process then we generate the input data input data is same as the generating any random value between 0 to 5 then we perform the matrix multiplication on the processor to get the corresponding benchmark code this benchmark code is same as the hls code after the ps implementation you can see that the, our input are in the 2d matrix form but for dma we need to have the vector form so what i what we do is that we take the dma input where the input of the matrix a are serialized followed by the elements of the matrix b so we get the dma input this dma is passed to the first dma to get the first output of the dma we do the polling mode in the dma to see that the operation is completed after that we find out the execution time then we convert the serial output from the dma into the vector uh, matrix output and we compare the output of the dmf G, uh, with the corresponding benchmark output and if there is an error we mention that same process is repeated for all the five dma to get the 
corresponding uh, accuracy and the execution time. And at the end, final average time is mentioned. Okay, so this is how the code uh, works in the SDK. It's a very simple code. Now, next thing we'll do is that we'll test it on the hardware. In my case, it is a remote hardware, so I'll connect it to the remote hardware. So we have connected to the remote hardware. So I'll go to the debug. So debug configuration. And I'll download my code on the SOC, which includes the FPJ one followed by the ELF file. Okay, so I'll start the JTAG terminal so that we can see the output on the screen. And now I'll run the code. So you can see that the execution is completed. The matrix multiplication on the PS took 25 microseconds. On the first non-optimized code took 66. After the pipelining the third loop, we got 32. After pipelining the second loop and unrolling the third loop, we got 7.33. And with the half precision, we can see that slightly higher time, but lower resources, higher time because we need to do the floating to half precision conversion at the input and half precision to floating conversion at the output. This can be avoided in case your data is in half precision. Same case for the uh, fixed point. Here we get a significantly lower resources, but you can see that because of the floating to fixed point and fixed point to floating conversion at the input and output respectively, it's slightly higher time. But if you make avoid that one, you will get significant speed up compared to your best optimized floating point number. So this completes our lab. Now you should be able to do map any algorithms using the HLS on the SOC.